Howdy ho, friends and foes, and welcome to Dads on Life, your weekly, weekly episodic show about parenting from a male perspective. I'm your host, Jay Miles, and with me as always are my co-host, Keith Bogan, Woo! Doug Hammondike, present, and Chad Holloway. Hello. Today we're going to be going into the upcoming holidays and how we will handle Thanksgiving and things like that in COVID-19. But before we do that, uh, I want to touch on something that uh, we should handle last week, but um, <laughs> we, we missed it and we tried to set it up to get it done in the middle of the week, but couldn't pull that off either. And that is um, the observance of Veterans Day. Um, I, of course, I have myself uh, and my uh, father didn't serve. Uh, my father was, uh, had a medical reason for not being drafted. Um, and I had my reasons for not doing it, besides from also probably would have been medically disqualified for some reasons. But um, I just wanted to mention uh, a couple of things first off. Uh, of course, we, uh, as, as fathers, as people, as uh, Americans, we would like to uh, send thanks to the veterans for their service, for the dedication, and for in most cases, no matter who or what side was in charge for defending this country and giving us the freedoms that we hold so dear. Uh, anybody else have anything to add to that? Well, I guess I, I would just like to add, you know, I, I, I certainly respect everybody who serves and, and, and especially those who, who volunteer. I never served, but my, uh, my stepdad actually was drafted and, and went into, uh, went through the basic training and actually was in stationed in Germany for a little bit of time uh, and had orders to go to Vietnam. But on the day he was supposed to go, they were canceled. And uh, so I w I've always been real uh, real thankful for that because, you know, like as we've talked about in the past, he had a huge impact on my life. And should he have gone, uh, my life would have been different as well. And his life could have been as well. Um, but that being said, um, for those who did go and who have served, no matter, no matter what the conflict, you know, I certainly appreciate their service. I've got a lot of friends who've done that. And, and um, you know, I know this is kind of one special day uh, in the year, but I, I, I try to recognize them and, and be very respectful and, and, and show gratitude towards them every day of the year, you know, because it's something that, that, that I'm glad that I haven't done, I haven't had to do, and I'm also glad that, that we, have, we have the ability to engage in the, the, uh, in the free speech that we have in this country, and there's, there's a lot of things that, even though I think people complain about it at times, uh, it's, we still are, uh, still have those rights to complain and to voice our opinions. And that's something I'm super thankful, thankful of. I'm, you know, certainly every country has their problems, but, uh, the United States is still one of the, the best country in the world. Yeah, I was going to say, um, for us, uh, I come from a long line of uh, Marines and uh, my next door neighbor was in Vietnam and we heard all the stories, uh, you know, as a tank commander and uh, the cemetery kind of corner to my own home. Uh, for Catholics, November is a very big uh, month of prayer, especially for the dead souls and the um, cemetery across the kind of corner to my home uh, 75% of them must be some sort of veteran. So with the Boy Scouts, we've always uh, put down the um, flags on um, Memorial Day and we take them up on Veterans Day. So it's a good time with the boys to uh, go into the cemetery and uh, say a prayer for them as a group and actually take some time to look at all the graves that are there 
and all the uh, they have the little placards on which wars that they've served in, and it, it's amazing uh, the length of time that some of the like so many different wars that uh, these people have fought in, and uh, you know just take a moment to like read and maybe say a prayer for them, but uh, my wife and a couple of other people from the church go uh, nearly daily at least to the cemetery to pray for the um, people who were lost over there. So it's interesting time for, you know, us. And uh, it's something definitely to explain and talk to the kids about. And, uh, you know, that's mostly what I could say about that. It, it, uh, I have um, somewhat different viewpoints, all positive, you know, and, and I'm very much amongst those who appreciate service and thanks people in the military for their dedication, that sort of thing. I have a longstanding reputation amongst my close friends as someone who's never touched a weapon. I've never touched, a, let alone fired, I've never touched a gun in my life. And there have been times in that uh, observance of what I look at, I, I'm very much a, I have no interest in guns or anything like that. And I'm not a big believer in people having most of the guns that are out there. I'm not, I'm not an anti second amendment guy or anything, but I don't believe that people need to have most of the guns that they have. So I've encountered some prejudice over the years by people assuming that since I don't want to touch guns that I must be anti-military which doesn't make any sense to me at all, but I've had, uh, especially in my younger days, some pretty strong disagreements with people who think that I must, uh, you know, that I'm anti-American and anti-military and all that, just because I personally choose not to want to own or touch weapons in any way. Um, so I've had that experience while raising my two sons trying to teach them the value of things like Labor Day and Memorial Day and the parade observances and things that go on with that. Um, I think I've mentioned on earlier shows that my sons have uh, spent years now uh, being the trumpet slash bugle players playing taps uh, at the uh, Memorial Day parades. Um, uh, so they're, they're the representation for our township. Um, in the cemeteries and at the memorial statues and things like that. <clears throat> so they've always, they've always known what it's about. Uh, what, what my sons and I have always uh, we've chirped about is that we're really good in this country about looking at Veterans Day, and looking at Memorial Day and saying, let's honor the troops. Two out of 365 days a year. And maybe in another show, we'll go down this rabbit hole of what about the other 363 days? Because we really suck. Uh, not people on this podcast. I'm talking about this country in general. Um, and this will feed directly into what we talk about in the rest of this podcast about the way we look at holidays uh, year round uh, and, and what we do with our kids on them. But um I think Veterans Day is a wonderful thing, and I'm glad that we take the time to acknowledge. I just wish we did more of it the rest of the year. Uh -huh. I could be on my soapbox for a while, but I'll leave it at that. Well, and thanks, Keith. And, and let me just say one more thing, too. You know, from, from a, a dad's perspective, you know, at this point, uh, so Frankie's in college, but not all of his friends chose that route. So some of them actually chose to go into the military. And one of the things that I've enjoyed being the being a father and uh, and being able to, to see the friends of my son as they mature is as they go into the military service and they come home, you know, seeing their changes both physically, you know, there's, there's one kid uh, who is just a, a beanpole and now he's, he's, he's jacked. He, he looks awesome. He looks great. Uh, and in addition, I think just the maturity level that they come back with too and seeing them, seeing them, mature and have discipline in their lives and, and make those hard choices, you know, to volunteer for something that, that, uh, um, 
that could potentially cost them their life, you know, basically putting their, their life on the line for the country. So, you know, from a father's perspective and seeing my son's friends coming back and, you know, I'm sure over Christmas break, I'm going to see three or four of them come through the house here. So it's always, it's always good to see them. And I always try to give them a, uh, you know, get, get, compliment them on, on their, their decisions and what they've done. Mm-hmm. One other thing that I saw on Facebook, a bunch of people were posting is, um, you know, maybe people shouldn't teach their kids so much about, uh, this is like, totally gonna like not be exactly <laughs> anywhere close to what it was but teaching your kids about uh the flag in your country like patriotism and more or less you know worrying about people and caring type thing so it had a picture of a kid and a flag and you know the, the second screen had uh something that was very uh pc like and i was like but as good parents you would teach your children both about patriotism and caring about people. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, not every, is not popular to everybody, but I think uh, one of the great things about scouting is also is uh, patriotism and how they teach you how to handle the flag. And I've been to uh, many uh, flag ceremonies and it's a deep solemn like time to actually be part of, to uh, be part of a flag ceremony and for Memorial Day and Veterans Day when uh, we actually get together and, um, you know, uh, honor those people in a ceremony, you know, usually at a VFW or something, we have the scouts show up all dressed and uh, participate in those types of things. And I think it's very important, you know, for kids to understand and learn. And um, I think that uh, scouts do a great job of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to add one more thing and then we'll move on, uh, to, uh, something else. Um, on a personal note, um, not sure you guys know, uh, the background, but, uh, in a group, uh, how most of us actually largely got together was we got, it, uh, got met each other in a group. Um, we started a few years ago. Uh, one of our admins um, is someone who uh, faces challenges every day because of uh, his services. Um, he was left with uh, shrapnel in his heart from um, the wars in uh, the Gulf region. Uh, Chris Oliver. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but Chris is pretty, has had a very rough existence since he came home. Uh, there's other things as well, but uh, and I, I'm going to add him. So hopefully you can at least see this on a personal note that uh, the young veterans and people like Chris really, um, I have a feeling may end up being uh becoming what uh, the f people who fought in Vietnam and that what um, the younger generation did uh, after September 11th, maybe over, and they may end up becoming, like I said, similar to uh, the forgotten Vietnamese veteran, uh, veterans, Vietnamese war veterans. Uh, so yeah, uh, especially, I mean, young uh, memory to the younger soldiers as well. Um, I know, actually I know a few uh, that are around the same age I was from surrounding communities that uh, passed away in the Gulf. So um, thanks to them as well, especially. Um, so now we're gonna move on to um, the upcoming Thanksgiving and holiday season, which obviously starts with Thanksgiving, but we'll discuss holidays in general. Um, who would, uh, I know there's probably some strong varying opinions amongst us. Uh, who would like to uh, kick this thing off? Well, let me throw something in there because I, I find it humorous. You obviously were not in my neighborhood last night <clears throat> because Obviously, starting with Thanksgiving would be a gross misstatement because <laughs> last night it was Diwali and 
There were fireworks and celebrations throughout my neighborhood well past midnight. And they started, you know, at sundown and they kept going for hours. And the and I think it's absolutely wonderful, although I have to wonder because there were many people out there and they were more interested in celebrating, which I think is wonderful, than necessarily socially distancing in a pandemic. So um, it is interesting to see how people are so entrenched in their um, traditions that they can't do enough for, uh, the for, for pandemic issues. And in fact, it, it's almost as if they take it, they're, they're hanging on to those traditions even more tightly because this is the first year I've ever seen such a massive display of fireworks for Diwali, which is a wonderful holiday, but I've never seen such an outpouring of celebration as I have this year. Um, uh, it, it's, I wonder if it's connected to the pandemic, in fact, because people are so desperate to get together and, and they miss their families and all that stuff and their communities and what have you, that they're overdoing it. And I have to wonder what's going to happen in my, it's, I'm, when I say my neighborhood, I literally mean block, right here on my block. There were, it was like Macy's 4th of July here last night for six, seven hours. Just an amazing display. It went on forever. Uh, and it, it's great to see people celebrating, but the holiday season kicked off last night. We're not waiting for Thanksgiving around here. <laughs> You. What was that, Jason? Doug, you uh, you have something to add? Uh, no, I, no, not really. Uh, well, of course, I gotta you know say something. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're planning on uh, generally our own. Um, what we've always done traditionally: my parents, my uncle, my brother, and his uh, family, and uh, my mom usually brings up a bunch of well not a bunch but at least a couple of people that have nowhere to go and we're basically waiting for people to say that they're not coming mm -hmm. so uh you know otherwise we're planning to do what we've always done for a traditional thanksgiving which is fun festival at my house with you know like i said it, it's a long tradition of my uncle's showing up at you know at my grandmother's house, it started at like 8 a.m. in the morning. And uh, after me and my wife got together and married, uh, we took on a tradition of doing it. And it's an awesome time. And um, we've been doing it now, hosting it for at least a good, I don't know, let's say 12 years or so. And, uh, you know, it, between all the appetizers and the wine and the cakes and the dinners, it, it, it's an awesome uh time for all the families to get together will the pandemic put a damper on it uh maybe to a certain extent i mean i, I know my aunts and uncle are you know uh definitely worried about it and uh my parents i think they are definitely going to show up my brother's all race signal that he will heather's brother uh seems like he's on the fence and probably not so i Let's see how that goes. But um, also, uh, <laughs> leading up to Thanksgiving, we have a, a wedding now next weekend. So that'll be interesting to see. It's a little backyard, first family only. So it's uh, Heather's nephew. So uh, we've been invited. So we'll be going on to that. And then we'll move on into the Christmas season, which pretty much is more or less the same setup type thing where everybody will be coming to our home you know either on christmas eve or christmas day so well yeah so <laughs> but uh yeah nothing earth shattering here let's say but yeah, and, and i would say more or less it's the same here uh frankie is going to come home i think next sunday and typically what we do is his, his mom will have uh thanksgiving and she just invites everybody just because Typically in the past, he's, he's had kind of abbreviated time here. So just to make sure he gets to visit with everybody, she'll just have everybody over to her house and, and uh, you know, we'll all bring something or whatever. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, 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 I think this should probably be the same. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I think it's a group who takes care of themselves. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, don't know if there's going to be anything 
special or anything different. The only thing I would say is that now I probably have a little more concern with my mom, just in case there is a weak link or an exposure that somehow gets into the, gets into the mix. You know, my mom's a little older and then also um, my ex-mother as well. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's more of a concern about that, I think, than, than, uh, um, than kind of the, the, the healthier, younger people. Right. I know for us, um, we would usually go up to um, my brother-in-law's, uh, well, my sister-in-law's parents usually. Um, but uh, with with this, that that's definitely not happening. Um, and the decision pretty much is about. 90% going to happen that for the first time, Elise and I are actually going to do pretty much all the cooking um, and take it to my in-laws, which is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I've pretty much wanted to do it since we moved in the house, which is now uh, going on uh, 12 years ago, I believe. So um, yeah, they're, they're, um, there will definitely be, uh, that'll be something that I'm really looking forward to. It'll only be small. Uh, it'll only be basically six of us, most likely, maybe seven. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, it's largely going to be, uh, we'll do everything. Um, my father-in-law kind of seems to want, has the idea of maybe having it catered, but I'm kind of like, no, 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 I want to do this. So, um, that's pretty much what is what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I'll tell a little bit of a funny story. Um, it being uh, the first time that we're going to do this with everything, with cooking everything. Um, when Elise and I first got together, I guess it was actually probably our first Thanksgiving. Um, so probably a month after we got together, um, I was going to go. I think I that year I went from. Um, my brother-in-law's family to theirs. Now, the night before, I went over to um, her house the night before, Les, because we had just started dating. We, I pretty much, after the first couple of weeks, spent almost every night there, um, which was, you know, what it was what it was. Um, but she decided, Elise decided she wanted to get a kosher turkey. Well, um, she got it and got it home and started doing it. And there we were for probably a good hour and a half to two hours, pulling the rest of the parts, the hard part that holds the feather in, the feathers on the turkey in, removing those with a knife. And I'm not kidding probably two hours digging those out so that i mean that's that's something that i'll never forget and never do again <laughs> I, I i i didn't even mention it and she looked at me and goes no we're not getting no i'm not getting that. i said no i know you're not i said i said there's no way i'll let you go i'm not doing that again heck no <laughs> what is it to follow up with one of those is like a, a bar around here we'd been at you know, drinking. And uh, it was the afternoon and a uh, guy came in and he was kind of like, hey, you guys need a turkey for Thanksgiving? And I was like, well, yeah, sure, yeah, we all do. So, uh, I, you know, it's like kind of like, well, let me call my wife. And he goes, all right, well, just come on outside. So uh, we go outside and what does he have? He has a tractor trailer full of live turkeys. Oh He's my. Like, just pick out whatever one you want. And I was like, you know, nobody wants a live turkey. <laughs> Why would no one do a live? He's like, that's fine. He's like, just pick it out and just wait around. I'll be back in about an hour or so with your turkey. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, no, go back into the bar, you know, type thing. Like, who, who would? It, uh, I mean, you know, come from Jersey, you know, who would ever expect something like that? You know. Yeah, but so. out out where you are, they they know what they're doing. So, um, it is fresh. Can't argue it's with funny. That. That's funny and random, but uh, believe me, 
with, uh, I, I know the area and north of you, especially pretty well, they know what they're doing. They probably were, would have, you probably would have been amazed by how, how good the turkey was, oh, yeah. you know, was set up for you, was dressed for you, you know? Um, yeah. I think. So, so my, my dad, I, you guys all know this, my, my dad, my uncle had a farm. And so my other uncle, when you're one of my cousin and I, we we're probably 10, 10 years old at the time to help him with the turkey for Thanksgiving. So we go out in the back and this big, it's a big gobbler. <laughs> and he's like, okay, you guys hold it down while I cut its head off. <laughs> so we're 10 years old. We kind of know what to expect, but not totally. So he's got a knife. He doesn't even have a hatchet. He's got a knife. Oh. He's like, really sharp. So he, we hold it down and he just like starts sawing on that sucker. And I'm just like, oh my God, it was, I'm like, it needs, it, you, he needed to whack it and, and be done with it. But even then, you know, after, after this, I understood that I understood the terminology running around with it, like a chicken with your head cut off because he said, don't let it flap its wings because once I, once I kill it, it's going to flap its wings and it'll bruise the meat. So my cousin and I are basically laying on top of this thing. He's killing it. And there's blood just squirting out the neck. <laughs> it was, it was a nightmare, but it was an experience. I mean, it was, it was a good Turkey. But <laughs> um, I would but, have been forever damaged. Oh God. <laughs> I did a, did get one from a farm once. Um, I can't lease Turkey farm down in. Um, and by me. Yeah. Yeah, it's out by Cinnamons and out in that area. East, East, actually, it's in East Windsor, I think. Windsor, right. In my town. Um, it was one of the, it really ended up being the best turkey, pretty, one of the best turkeys that we had ever had. It was unbelievable, this, this turkey. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, obviously you can do it from a, um, for, from a farm. Um, but I think most people just get the, uh, the frozen turkey from, um, their local shop, right. That they get for free and things like that. And, um, but I'll, I'll tell you one experience that it wasn't a personal experience. It's a story. My father has told me you're talking about going back to what Chad was just talking about with the, uh, with the Turkey, my father long time ago, um, had a roasted pig, had a pig roast and he had to pick up the, uh, the pig from, I forgot where it was, and the guy uh, slaughtered down in Vineland, Millville area, um, slaughtered the pig right in front of him, and well, somehow the brains literally just fell. Oh, my father, I don't think he ate the pig at all that day. Oh, God, <laughs> so, do we have to go here? Oh, this is awful. Oh. I'm sure we could tell stories like this for hours. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I could tell, I mean, I could tell stories about dining with my family and you, you'd kind of, you, we'd get a good laugh at it. We should actually do something like that. Uh, as the holidays are coming, do, do family dinner stories. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting thinking about it, but yeah, I mean, I, that was just kind of something that, something that popped in my head as soon as she, you mentioned about the Turkey chat. So I, reeling this back in, if I can intercede here, because you, <laughs> you have wobbled off farther off of our axis than I've ever seen us do. I'm going to reel us back in here and talk about, um, I think my experience here, especially with my kids, is going to be very different than anyone else's because one of the things I taught my kids growing up is that the holidays themselves are mostly Madison Avenue creations, an expression I've used on this call before, um, and that it's not the day that's important, it's what we're talking about. Um, you know, Thanksgiving is a day to well, it's actually a day to, to honor the pilgrims and things like that, but we, we forgot that a long time ago. <clears throat> but it became a family holiday. And in, in that regard, it's a day that the family gets together. Does it have to be the Thursday in November that, uh, that the world, and especially the United States, seems to have designated? Not necessarily. No, no. You're yeah, right. So, um, and it, this was very important in my, when I got divorced. And I had very uh, direct conversations with my soon-to-be at that point ex-wife. 
she knew exactly what I where I was coming from because for her, her family was much more focused on specific days, and this includes birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. For me, uh, I've had this philosophy since the kids were born, and that is every day is a holiday that I'm with my sons. So when when we were going through the divorce process, I said you can have them every holiday that's on the calendar. I don't care as long as I have them half the time. Doesn't matter when they are, when it is. And you know, obviously you want to work it out so that if certain events are coming up, that you know, games to go to and things like that, that you uh, you know, we could work that back and forth. And, and we finally got to a point where we did. Uh, the divorce settlement actually talks about you know, she gets them for these holidays and then next year I get them for these holidays. But we've ignored that entirely ever since we got divorced. Um, so when Jeremy comes home the day before, when he comes home from Ohio State the day before Thanksgiving, he will go to his mother's for Thanksgiving because it's important to her that right. they on that day. And right. then I'll have, he'll be here the rest of the six weeks that, I, that he stays in New Jersey before he goes back. So basically, I get the better of the deal anyway, and I don't really care about that particular day. It doesn't matter to me at all. Um, we, the, the boys and I are very much of the same mindset that we just want to spend time together. We want to do things together. We want to live life together. Um, and when it happens is, is our holidays. Um, I don't run into too many people that think like that, but um, we, we definitely are not focused on those specific days at all. So for COVID purposes, whatever, we don't care. You know, we just want to be safe. Right. I, I mean, for us, yeah, I mean, uh, we do make it a family day. And uh, I do understand your uh, idea, the pilgrims and all that and honoring and uh, what goes into actual Thanksgiving. But uh, it, for us, it's a very thankful day and meaningful day in the sense of all our families getting together. And it's also been a very charitable day because I can't think of a single year that we haven't had unexpected guests from me inviting the lady from uh, the dollar store who had nobody, nowhere to go or having random people from off the street brought home. And uh, my parents, like I said, bringing up uh, people who don't have a uh, place to go in their community uh, that uh, every year I could think of at least somebody who we didn't expect uh, to a certain extent has come and uh, shared a meal with us. And uh, the other times I would say that previous to that, I had uh, spent a long couple years in a soup kitchen working in Newark. So I, I mean, it's a very big day of at least uh, some sort of, I don't want to call it charity, but uh, community self thinking about others on that day. Um, for us, yeah, pretty much it will be, um, it's just going to be pretty much just very small, very quiet, uh, but well, not quiet because, uh, <laughs> <Elvis is there. laughs> well, no, Elvis won't be here. Okay. Uh, well, we won't, we won't be here. He will. Um, but no, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very easy very quiet mostly um i don't i don't even know if my 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 family my sister and, and my sister will probably go down to my brother-in-law's i don't know if my parents are going to be around i have no idea um but uh yeah that that um that's a thought that i have had about doing the um about doing the soup kitchens on um on the holiday, especially during the holiday season. Um, not at this point with the girls being nine and six. Um, I think it just needs a little bit more time uh, before we do something like that. But that has crossed my mind quite often. And I'm sure eventually we, we will end up doing it. We're doing something similar. There is a bunch of them around. So that that's definitely in my craw of, of thoughts, but unfortunately, yeah, I do think that uh, obviously there's going to be heavy impact on, um, on Thanksgiving and gatherings due to COVID. Uh, 
I can understand people being upset, but some of the reactions that I have seen to that are off the charts ridiculous. It's just, there's people that still just don't get it. And it's really started to wear thin on, uh, on certain things. Well, to be fair, it's no different than the nail salon. Uh, Americans in general think it's their God-given right to gather when they want to. And I, and I think it's wonderful that everybody thinks we live in such a free country. But I, someone else said at the beginning of this call, you know, the, uh, the whole concept of freedom is also predicated on safety. Uh, and that you do things when it's intelligent to do things. You know, we're free to walk down the street naked, but, you know, you're... You know, uh, it's there's there are certain things you just don't do, and, and when it comes to the safety of others, sometimes you adjust your habits. And yeah, you know, I don't want to wobble off into what is obviously a political stick of dynamite, but it is very frustrating. I share your frustration, Jason, that um, people think I don't. I'm absolutely. I'll wear a mask. I'll do this. I'll do that. But it's Thanksgiving, so I must get together with my family. It's, it, to me, it's the same thing as. I have to go to the nail salon. I have to go to the hair salon. I, I can't live without it. I, I'm sorry, I just don't buy that. Uh, very, it is very frustrating. My boys are very but well aware of things. They'd love to go see their grandparents when they come home for Thanksgiving. The best they're gonna do is go visit them and sit like 30 feet away outside. Uh, but her, their grandfather probably can't be out in the cold weather anyway, because he's not doing well. So the chances of them seeing each other is gonna be very slim, But you know, normally they would walk inside and spend the, spend a day with them where they live. It's not going to happen now. Um, and um, uh, it's, to me, it's just something that people are, a lot of people are not accepting and understanding because they think it's their blessed right to do so. Um, very yeah, well, I think it's, uh... oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, Doug, go ahead. Don't let me spin off the axis here. Well I know I was going to add on to spinning off that uh, access. Just uh, my feeling is just that uh, it, it's like one of those things where we all kind of, I don't know. I think that a lot of, lots of people are just tired of it and they're like, oh, well, we know this or that. And then it, it was like, well, we're all going to get it, you know, eventually. So you just don't want to be part of those people that, you know, are going to overwhelm the hospitals and stuff. And now that they're saying that they have a vaccine, it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe we should be more cautious at all. Well, you know, both coasts like did their share. And now you're seeing the middle of the country, like, you know, a bunch up with uh, this uh, saddening uh, virus, you know, affecting the, the entire world. And uh, I don't know where, you know, laid the chips at this point, you know, except that, uh, we try our best and, uh, you know, it's, it's like, I think we all, well, not, I can't say we all, but uh, more or less the feeling uh, that I get from being around the people at the soccer matches and people going out in uh, different uh, vicinities that where I'd say that more gather uh, like church around church and stuff is that, oh, well, you know, Everybody, if you don't feel sick and you're not sick, then and you're watching yourself, then it's okay. Type uh, meandering, and uh, I mean, you know, I, I understand that theory, but it doesn't hold up because of you know the asymptomatic people that can be getting other people sick, and that's what you need to look. You know, well, you can't look. You know, you can't look into it. Just it's one of those things that you know people. They could be like that, and you could be affecting yourself by being around them and not even knowing. Right. And, um, you know, it's just like a tough call. But I, I think a lot of people have that feeling or gut feeling that it's like, well, I'm not sick, so I'm okay. You know, so, and if everybody else that thinks they're not sick, then it's okay to be around them. Right. Um, which, if the cases would have kept going down, because they had, they were going down. They were on the decline. But when they, the, when they go from, they went from between 
six, uh, between 40, well, let's say 50 and at one point, 80,000 cases a day. We, we were in one with in the early part of this. We went down at times where I did see it was under, there were, but this is still insane, that there were under 40,000 cases. It's still a lot. Like 30, I think I saw one night, 39,000, which I was like, oh, wow. Hopefully it'll keep going down. But now here we are just a couple of months later and we've had a couple of days where there have been six figures of cases in a day. Quite a few days and we're up to 175,000 a day now. Yeah. Uh, but to intercede on that, so I was talking to somebody yesterday and obviously we've completely fallen off our axis here, but um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who has a somewhat opposing point of view whose belief is that the case count by percentage has gone down even with 175,000 because he says, and I can't dispute, I don't know whether he's right or not, but I don't think he is. He says that if testing had been available in March and April, the way it is now, we would have had a half million cases a day. It's hard to predict that, but he is correct in saying that there's a lot more availability for testing now than there was then. Um, whether or not the infection rate is greater now than it was in March and April, or whether it actually comparatively is less is an interesting conversation. Um, right. And I'm not, look, I'm the person who's saying everybody should be, I don't want to go to lockdown, but I would say everybody should be voluntarily staying home as much as possible and pretty much stay at home order should be in effect for the next month. Right. Um, uh, with that said, I, I'd love to learn more about what this other viewpoint is. My kids are very much of I know Thanksgiving's coming, Dad. I know the holidays are coming, but we're going to hunker down. The only people that the three of us are going to see once the boys are here are their girlfriends, which in itself is a risk, but it's a risk that we've jointly decided that we would take. But other than that, nobody gets in the house, uh, and we don't pretty much go anywhere. Um, uh, by the way, to the extent of, of the conversation before, uh, we feel so strongly that holidays are just things that we're together that Justin isn't even coming home for Thanksgiving. Justin's gonna stay on the campus of South, well, on, in his apartment in South Carolina to finish up his semester. And he won't be home until like December 12th. And then we might, you know, throw together a nice meal, you know, and have our own mini Thanksgiving around December 15th, but it's just whenever we're together. Right, now, now I have one thing that I'd like to add. Um, and this is something that Maybe I shouldn't say, but <laughs> when well, has that ever stopped you before? Fuck it, I'm gonna <laughs> say it anyway. Um, we have. I now I I'm guessing that it's ex if it's not exceeded it, it's extremely close to a quarter of a million Americans. Who have lost their lives during this pandemic it depends on whose count you're looking at right um i have a question how do you tell the families of 250,000 americans that have passed away that they're supposed to be thankful and grateful on a holiday I think you're digging into an area of religion uh, part, part, where um, we are taught in various Christian and Jewish households, especially. I can't speak for Muslim because I don't really, uh, I don't know much about it, but I don't think they're that much different that God or Allah or whoever has a plan that we should all be thankful for. And along the way, part of the plan actually calls for people to join the greater being um so and it, there are things that we just don't understand uh if i wanted to go down that that rabbit hole like I, we could do a whole thing about uh, the master plan and all that sort of thing and, and uh why life itself is joyous and but yes i mean we've all had things in our, we're all old enough to know that uh, there have been things in our lives where we sit and we wonder how in the world could there be a higher being with all the things that are happening around us well, all the personal loss we may have had, uh, but 
you know, watch it in society too. And, and sometimes I'm sure we've all questioned it at one point or another. Doug, I know you're a very religious man, but I'm sure you've had your moments. You said, how could that possibly be if God is as benevolent as, as has been portrayed? Um, uh, I, I've had a lot of those moments. Um, and uh, society in general is at an all time low in terms of being attached to some kind of religion. And you have to wonder if there's a connection. Uh, you know, people are more and more questioning, you know, with all the things that are going on around them, they're wondering how this could be possible if there's someone over, overlooking it, if you will. I, again, don't want to go down the rabbit hole of religion, but um, there is a way I, I know, and Doug would be better at explaining it than I am because he's more versed in it, uh, to explain to someone who's suffered loss why they should still be thankful. Yeah, it's one of those tough subjects that you hope that you never come across that you're actually ever faced with, you know, and you can have your facts and you close your mind and say, hey, but look at X amount of people die every day, you know, and are, you know, would I have to say something about people who die every day? No, but, um, you know, there's, uh, I guess just basically, you know, religion and faith gives you hope and uh, you should be thankful for every day. And like Keith was saying that, you know, there obviously would be like, uh, you hope that there was uh, some reason that they were taken away and uh, that it hasn't just been uh, in vain. And, um, but it, it's definitely something, one of the subjects that, it, I mean, where there's your heartfelt feeling and then there's like verses and stuff that you throw at people to help them comfort them. And then there's like, but if there's a God and all, then why does he allow this to happen? And uh, I guess that's the biggest problem that uh, people have with uh, just basically, I guess, all religions that, you know, you know, why is this allowed to happen? And uh, I don't really have a good answer for that. It's, uh, you know, except that, you know, the, in, that they're in a better place, let's say. Although the people here are the ones that weep and mourn for them and uh, keep them in their hearts and stuff. So it's definitely um, something that we could probably discuss at a better time, let's say. There's a topic for another show there, Jason. Yeah, that, definitely. Yeah. Jason asked a good question. I mean, there's more than a million families worldwide because we're always so focused on the US, but the reality is, is that. Um, one, more than 1.3 million people have died from this virus worldwide. Uh, and that's the official count. God knows it's probably wildly more than that. Um, but there's over a million families worldwide that, you, you, boy, you're going to have a tough time explaining why they should be thankful for anything in the upcoming holiday season. It's a good question. Chad, you, you got anything there? Well, I guess from my perspective, you know, some of the stuff, my view is that life is not fair and that this stuff happens, whether it's COVID or whether it's something else, right? And, you know, for example, you know, my, my uncle had cancer and he died and how, how do I make, how do I make my cousin feel better? Uh, and, and by the way, it was, it was the uncle that, that uh, cut the head off the turkey. Was, <laughs> was, so it was like six months ago. So, you know, my, my way, my way of comforting her is is to say that I have a lot of good memories with your dad. And, I, and whenever I think of your dad, I laugh. I laugh about me and our other cousin holding down the turkey. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's like some belly and just some, some good times we've had. And, and you know, because death, death, no matter what the cause is tragic. And sometimes it can be when, especially when it's premature, it's, a, it can be especially tragic, but you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that life's not fair, shit happens, and we got to deal with it. You got to make the best of what you got right now. So I, I, I don't know that you make them feel better. I mean, I think some of it's just kind of an, kind of an attitude about, about things. What's their attitude like? What's my attitude like? My attitude is that if, if somebody had a good, a positive impact on, 
on somebody else and in a family you know remember remember the good things remember the takeaways that that person has taught you that's the that for me is the is the takeaway remember the impact of that person and carry that with you and 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 try to try to share those things with others and it also comes down to just time you know we never know that time that we had and uh you know and uh it's a cliche you know to say oh be thankful for the people that are around you love the, you know you've seen the memes you said them yourselves but uh sometimes it's something that you actually have to actually do you know and like you know at any time any of us could be taken and it's a thought that we all have to live with and uh you know it, there's fear there's rational fear there's irrational fear but um as to comforting those people yeah it's very interesting i, I was just listening very closely as we took we, the last three minutes and and that is the 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 joy and the comfort that i think doug perhaps in a different way i don't want to say better but more so than uh, perhaps the rest of us you hear doug's words very carefully when we talked about it we said died when doug talked about it he said taken is there's a plan behind it uh, that maybe the rest of us don't necessarily subscribe to as much. And that's not a good or bad thing. It's just a different thing. Uh, but it is definitely about perspectives. Uh, and if you listen closely to the way each of us talks, you can almost feel the belief system uh, in each of us and you know, how we look at things just by the wording that we, we subconsciously use. Uh, taken is a very interesting and deliberate word uh, and from where Doug uh, sits and believes, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're, we're now about 96 miles away from where we started this conversation, Jason. What else do you want to do with it? <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> You're the host. <laughs> no. Host of the producer. No. Um, that's a good point. We're just the talent. <laughs> That's right. That's We're hired hands, you know. <laughs> Talent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've had enough. I have enough time. I've had a hard enough time in my life dealing with talent. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, now, the um, you you brought up a good point though a while ago. Um, <laughs> about um, the possibility of maybe taking it back, especially with children, to what the holiday itself, talking about Thanksgiving, about what the holiday of Thanksgiving is about itself, in and of itself. Um, it's, you're, you're right. It is a long, it is a long lost, um, story. I, as we've seen the, the fact that, um, in some places, history is glossed over a lot of it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is glossed over. And I believe one of the things that is, is, is the first Thanksgiving in that time of, and the situations they were in, the hardships they went through uh, from top to bottom. It, it, it's a lost, it definitely is a lost um, aspect of, of Thanksgiving that maybe should, maybe it is time to, especially now, be a, a good time to bring back to the forefront. Yeah, and, and my recollection too of the first Thanksgiving was that uh, this was something between the pilgrims and the Native Americans. At that, at the time I learned about it, they were called Indians, right? <clears throat> but it, but it was a time when they, they came together and they kind of celebrated, and that, that the that the Indians, uh, Native Americans, had had taught them how to plant things and how to. <clears throat> how to care for themselves and it was really kind of cooperation that, that uh, helped help the uh, pilgrims to survive 
taught them how to grow corn, how to, you know, I remember hearing a story about putting a fish, you know, in the hole with a kernel of corn to, to, to grow it, you know, because it adds the fertilizer. Great too. Yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I think, especially maybe, maybe in today's world, it's, 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 it's good to talk about how, <clears throat> how we can help each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good um, that's a, that's been lost on a lot of people since uh, this whole thing happened, I'm starting to believe. And it's disheartening to see it happening because there is a, how am I going to put this? There seems to be a rise in me first mentality in this country right now. It's not a good thing. Yeah, I wonder uh, where that came from. What'd you say? I wonder where that came from. Oh, it started long before him. Probably, I suppose. The, 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 the rise of the me first mentality has been happening for a while, um, but it, it's taken, I think it's taken on, uh, it's become a problem and has become a completely different animal that um than it was years ago um it's almost is it to the level that i'm gonna bring this up that it was in like say the 1980s no it's not um hopefully it won't get there because uh the 1980s was for some very difficult uh time and 70s and 80s um there seemed to be a coming together again for a little while. And then now it's gone again back and starting to spread uh, again into the, the me first mentality and the haves and the have nots that that gap is especially continuing to grow. Um, it's hopefully something that we've, we've, got to try to get away from as we're, as time goes on. Um, I, people need to start thinking on a, maybe on a board, broader spectrum about their fellow man. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. You're not wrong. It would be nice if that actually happened. I don't know how you could be wrong about that. <laughs> What's that? That's the next six shows, Jason. So, you know, plan yourself accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> what, the me first mentality is the next six shows? <laughs> or how to, how to get the hell out of it? Because I don't see it happening. <laughs> but the me too, I mean, I guess you brought us full circle. It's a very interesting way to start to uh, wrap it up. And that is... Um, the me first mentality is very much why people insist that they have to get together for Thanksgiving, that it's their uh, blessed right to gather when they want to, instead of being respectful to other people uh, and, and, and to the health and well-being of our society, it's all about them. It's all about the individual. Uh, so in, in some ways, that, that's probably the most uh, related statement to uh, the theme of the show that we've just made. So good, good job bringing us back home. That was good. <laughs> You're right on track there. Uh, I think you know, the four of us are very much, yeah, we'll, we'll, there'll be certain people who are around us, but we're going to be as careful as possible. I wish the rest of our society would think the same way. Uh, and I'm unfortunately not overly optimistic. Right. I think the internet also, well, like, uh, you know, Facebook and all has also compounded it with the idea of creating all these like groups and all where you could, um, you know, have an opinion. And like back in the day, it wouldn't it really matter much. But now if you know, had a people of anti-maskers, you had a group of people who, you know, resist. Uh, if you had a group of people, there's so many different groups out there. And you get a bunch of people behind you that all believe and you hear the same mantra every day and you believe that you're right and you don't really participate in, uh, you know, anything else, then, you know, your mind is set. We're back 
then you know you, you had your mindset and you thought we, you believed and your family and all would exp- talk to you and stuff and you know and uh, you got your friends and stuff but uh nowadays you could just be so infatuated with uh like your your own point of view and have so many people follow you and actually comment and encourage you that uh I, I guess it could be you could almost say it's a real sickness <laughs> i mean well, you know it's the danger of the new social media platform known as parlor but again that's a whole other show yeah and i didn't look into it but yeah you get around uh the high techs uh, desire to uh, censure, if you will, uh, censor um, people who are speaking obvious falsehoods because they want a place where they can say whatever lie comes to their mind and spread the word on it. So that's where Parlor comes from. Uh, and that, but yeah, look, we've already gone an hour. I'm going to shoot somebody if we go down that path because that, that could take days. <laughs> and if with the first three hours, you know. I haven't even touched a gun and I want to shoot somebody when I think about it. (laughs) Uh. All right, Jason, take us home. Chad, do you have anything else to add before we head out of here? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think, you know, Doug hit the nail on the head when he talks about the social media and and Keith as well, when they talk about social media. And I think that, in many cases is, has kind of exacerbated any differences that are out there and kind of reinforces what people think. And, you know, may, maybe those differences in opinion and those ways of thinking existed prior to social media. But I think with social media, I think it's just an opportunity to really reinforce those things. So I agree with them. Right. Um, as I said, hopefully we, we may, we could eventually be moving towards um, that a coming together of, of society in the end um, in the United States. But right now um, we seem to be pretty far off base from that. Hopefully we look towards a brighter future as, as they've always, as uh, was once said, a change is going to come. And we are, for sure now heading for a change. Whether that's a change for the good or a change for the bad remains to be seen. My hope is that it will lead us to and help guide us into a better time for the world as a whole a better place, a better plan of how to move forward. Because moving backwards is definitely not where this planet needs to go to survive. And as we come into the holiday season, we hopefully we'll um, be able to see the future in a different way and use this holiday season possibly as a season to plant the seeds into the new future and the new world and hopefully a better world. So from all of us here on Dads on Life, take care, everybody. Have a good one. Enjoy.